Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer here. The Mini Moog is of course probably the most famous synthesizer ever produced, and likely the most emulated in the world of software. So does the world really need another Mini Moog emulation? Native Instruments think so. They've just released Monarch, which they call the holy grail of analog modeling. This is a bold claim indeed. So let's jump into some sound examples and judge for ourselves. Let's go. Now in this first example we have two instances of Monarch. Now one's playing the lead and a second is playing the bass. In the case of the lead instance, we are controlling this with Ableton Live's arpeggiator. Uh, this is a three oscillator sound. Two of these oscillators are pitched up seven semitones to give us that kind of housey electro effect. One of them will come in after about eight bars to thicken, thicken things up a bit. But otherwise, this is a completely dry sound. This is not being processed in any way. Uh, the bass is, is a vowel bass that is going into a compressor receiving a side chain input from a kick drum to give us that pumping effect that we love from house music. Let's give this a listen. So I let that play all the way through just to give you a sense for the filter movement there. Let's solo this bass. I want to call your attention to the extreme amount of detail that you get out of these filters. Uh, they're really extraordinary. The resolution is something I don't think I've ever heard before. And there's just kind of a magic to this sound. I think they've, they've really achieved something special here with just the grittiness and the authenticity of these sounds. You can also solo this lead part. You can also add things like feedback. The really cool thing about Monarch is that it will behave essentially as a, as a hardware synth would. You can push things to extreme, extremes, you can make these filters self-oscillate, uh, really crank the feedback and apply modulation to all of this, and it will behave basically as a hardware synth would. It's really something extraordinary. Now in the next uh, section we'll look at a down-tempo example that's a little more uh, basic. Now here's Monarch in more of a down-tempo setting. Uh, in this case, it's going to be playing kind of this warm, rumbling bass line paired up with piano chords that are being played by Ableton Live's sampler instrument and a drum groove played by battery that is drenched in reverb to make it sound like it's coming from someplace far away. So here's how this sounds. So there you get the sense for it. Now, now this snapshot's interesting because it makes use of Monarch's modulation capabilities. If we solo this, we can get a uh, easier, easier listen. You hear that kind of pulsating sound. What we have set up here is oscillator three set to low, which puts it in the sub audio range and allows it to function as an LFO. Over here in our control section, we see that uh, our modulation mix is set 100% to, to oscillator three this mod depth is, is cranked pretty high, about 90% or higher. And the switch over here in our filter section is active, indicating that modulation is going to the filter cutoff. And so, so all of this is active, and it's opening and closing the filter based on what we have here. Now when you have this set to low, the oscillator's tuning basically functions as an LFO speed selector. And of course, the waveform that you use will radically change how this sounds. You can change the, the filter starting point to, of course.
So this is just a very warm, organic kind of sound, and you're using modulation. You can make subtle changes to it. You can bring it into the wobble range. And of course, with this modulation mix, you're not limited to just oscillator three. You can also use this noise generator here to uh, do some modulation that will give you some even wackier sounds. So that's kind of some of the, the neat modulation possibilities. No, they're not extensive, but they're very effective. And I find, frankly, that some of the more simple uh, systems that we have at our disposal are often the most musical because they free us from the shackles of feeling like we have to use everything. And I think that's probably why the original Mini Moog was such magic and, and why this is such a unique instrument as well. Now let's take a third example, this time using Reactor Spiral Sequencer. This is a fantastic instrument. It will kind of blow your mind when you first start using it. Instead of arranging notes as a typical step sequencer does where you have them going left to right, this has notes kind of orbiting around a central point like planets orbit around the sun. And every time they get to a certain uh, place, they send note information to whatever is receiving the data. Now here we have Snapshot 68, which is Affliction 3. It is a, a sequence in F minor. And uh, this is sending its information over to Monarch, which is on track two. Now Monarch is playing a snapshot called Blue Sunday, and this touches on something else that's really cool about this instrument. A lot of these snapshots are based on classic Moog melodies from back in the day. So in this case, we're talking about a New Order track uh, from the mid-late 80s called Blue Monday, which I probably listened to a billion times in my life and uh, before my friends convinced me to start listening to Rush, which incidentally is also covered in the snapshot bank. There's a Tom Sawyer snapshot. Uh, and for your information, Matt Salidi has done a fantastic video on this, going through some of these uh, uh, snapshots and, and playing the original melodies. It's a ton of fun. You should, you should check that out. Uh, third, we have Machine playing a, a, a drum groove called Futronic. I've loaded it with the, with the patterns that it loads with. And let's give this one a listen. We have classic 80s sounds there, very convincing, super responsive filter. One thing I want to show you as well is the legato functionality here, because legato really brings a lot of these sounds to life, uh, it gives you that glide between sounds. There are a couple different ways to use it. Legato mode itself will, will activate legato only when the notes actually overlap in the sequence. Uh, in this case, Spiral is, is not really playing that many notes. I don't, I'm not sure any of them are going to overlap, uh, but who knows. Uh, so let's turn this to always, because in the case of always, it will always glide between notes. Then we have to, of course, set a time here. The higher up this is, the longer the glide time. There are two different algorithm, algorithms that we can use uh, for, the, for the glide, and they differ slightly. We'll go with filter for now. Let's take a listen. starting to get it a little acid into our sound, aren't we? Oh god, that is just so so responsive and so organic. I love it. Uh, there are other snapshots in here. There's a, another snapshot that makes reference to Yaz, which is another uh, late 80s operation uh, out of England. This one I think is from the track Only You. I'm not sure. Please correct me on that. You can also use Legato with this. Just incredibly pure sounds here. So that just gives you a sense for some of the uh, kind of more 80s type sounds and some of the historical interest that is part, that is kind of in the, the lifeblood of, of Monarch itself. So there's just a few more things you need to know about Monarch, and the first of which is that it is a monosynth, meaning that it is perfect for things like leads and basses, which require only one note to be played at a time, but you really can't play chords with this unless you want to load uh, separate instances of Monarch on separate tracks and put together chords that way. So, so you should know that out of the gate. Now, the default sample rate is twice reactors uh, normal sample rate, which is 44,100. You see here that it's 88,200. Uh, with great power comes uh, great demand, I guess you could say. But 
while in theory this should make it more CPU hungry in practice, it doesn't seem to matter, and that's perhaps because it's a monosynth. But the the higher sample rate is uh, necessary to achieve that higher level of authenticity and resolution that you get with this. So it's a small price to pay. Now you can also adjust the things that are the kind of uh, legendary imperfections of the mini Moog that have been recreated here. Now these are things like uh, pitch drift that is as you move throughout the keyboard sometimes there are slight detunings. That this was something that happened with the original mini Moog that you know they were subject to, to problems of, with humidity, with uh, irregularities in the el el electrical current all sorts of things, but this became part of the magic of, of the mini Moog, and these are all controllable in the B panel. Uh, leakage is something where you can turn off an oscillator and yet still hear the signal in the signal path, and you can adjust all of these here, so you have that at your disposal as well. They, they haven't just put you at the mercy of all of these interesting, uh, interesting kind of imperfections. But in any case, there are a number of other uh, uh, resources out there that you should take a look at if you're interested in Monarch. Uh, I mentioned Matt Saletti's video earlier. Uh, Peter Kern has done a very nice piece on Create Digital Music uh, that kind of describes why this is something special. And Mac Pro Video also seems to have a very good tutorial on this that you might want to check out. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. I hope that you uh, will check out Monarch. It's 99 bucks, which I think is a steal. It doesn't look like there, there is a demo available, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully this has given you a good sense for whether it would be right for your music. So thanks again for watching, guys. Take care. I'll talk to you again soon.